Welcome to Trafalgar Square. We're here for Amnesty's demonstration in support of the Arab Spring. We're joined by Maryam El Khawaja from Bahrain. Uh, Mar Maryam, uh, what, what's happening in Bahrain at the moment? Because we're not hearing very much here in the West. Unfortunately, the Bahraini government is trying to make sure that there's a media blackout. In the past couple of weeks, we've seen them denying entry to journalists and NGOs from outside. Um, we're basically seeing the same violations that we saw 10 months ago and 5 months ago. And they're everything from torture to arbitrary arrest to excessive use of force against pro-democracy protesters on the street. You know, house raids at 4 a.m. in the morning. Uh, kidnappings where a person is kidnapped for several hours, tortured, and then dumped on the streets somewhere. And I mean, it's, it's basically all of the same widespread, uh, very, very grave uh, humorized violations. And uh, what, why do you think that the West aren't reporting uh, what's going on there, if this is still going on? Unfortunately, it seems that the Bahraini revolution is the one revolution that's inconvenient to everyone. It's inconvenient to the Gulf countries and it's inconvenient to the Western governments who have a lot of interest in these Gulf countries. Um, at a time when we're seeing, you know, the Western, the international community uh, pushing for actions against certain countries for violating human rights, we're seeing them still selling arms to Bahrain. I mean, uh, when we're talking about Bahrain, we're not even talking about, uh, you know, them doing actions on Bahrain. We're, not, we're talking about them not even doing the bare minimum to stop the human rights violations taking place in the country. So protesters are still out on the streets um, as we speak or up until now uh, trying to fight for a democratic rule? Yes, definitely. I mean, ever since the very huge crackdown that everyone heard about in March, which was supported by the Saudis, um, the protests haven't stopped. They've been going on almost on a daily basis. It's just that it stopped being covered by the media. Uh, but we're expecting to see a lot more um, protests, much larger protests, in the next three days in the um, anniversary, the one-year anniversary of the revolution. And uh, it, it seems that the government is also planning a very huge crackdown. There are uh, several eyewitnesses said that they saw Saudi troops being sent over the bridge into Bahrain in the past few days. So what hope is there for uh, the protesters in Bahrain if they're not getting much media coverage? The Western governments aren't uh, telling the Bahrain to go easy or to stop or to allow some form of reform. Uh, what hope is there for the protesters? Well, looking at it from an international angle, you would have to say that there isn't much hope unless we see people who are locals who decide that their governments who preach human rights and democracy and don't actually work based on those uh, concepts, that they start pressuring their governments to do something. But I think our main hope, my optimism lies upon the Bahraini people. It depends on how determined they are and how uh, willing they are, to, how much they're willing to pay to achieve freedom and dignity. And it seems right now that they're willing to pay whatever price it comes with. So do you think you could see a situation like Syria developing? Uh, no, I don't think it can get uh, turned into something. I don't know if the situation in Syria can be addressed as a civil war yet or not. But the Bahraini people don't have access to weapons. So you're not going to see them picking up weapons and fighting uh, for their freedom. They're going to keep demanding it in these protests, despite the lack of international support. Um, but I do see freedom and de uh, democracy coming, whether it's in one year or in ten years, but it's going to come. People have got their voice and they won't let it go. Definitely. I mean, once you break that barrier of fear, there's no going back. And what can people here in the UK do to maybe put pressure on their governments to make change? Is that possible? Yeah, of course. I mean, you have the UK and the US still selling arms to Bahrain at a time that they're calling for a peace and democracy in Syria. It lies upon the people of the UK to tell their democratic government that we won't stand for this. If you're going to talk about human rights and democracy, do it for all countries. Stop practicing foreign policy on a double standard. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. This is Glenn McMahon for Vision on TV here in Trafalgar Square.